I'm Barry Sandoval with some highlights of our August auction and let's start with the biggest highlight of all. It's Action Comics number one. Check it out right here. It's an unrestored copy of the first appearance of Superman. It's pretty tough to top that in the comic world. Uh, but your average Fox fan might be more interested in Mystery Men comics. This is the highest graded copy of number one. And after all, it's the first appearance of the Blue Beetle who appears uh, in uh, DC Comics even today. Here's Batman number 11. Uh, this is certified near mint. A uh, very hot book now. It's one of the earliest Joker covers and one of the most desirable issues of the Batman series. Another hot book, All-Star 8. This is the first appearance of Wonder Woman and we've got a blue label copy for you. Startling Comics number 49. This is one of the best covers Alex Schomburg ever did. Of course, many call him the greatest Golden Age cover artist. And this is the Mile High Pedigree copy, 9.6. We have a wonderful Golden Age Batman run in the catalog and uh, tough to pick just one, but I chose Batman number 100 uh, from the group. This is certified 9.4. Now we come to the comic that started the Silver Age, at least Marvel's version of it, Fantastic Four number one. Uh, now this is a, a purple label copy, but the only restoration here is trimming. Look how white uh, the cover is. It's quite remarkable. Amazing Fantasy number 15, this is Verified Signature, signed by Stan Lee in the interior. This is from the collection of Magic Woo, and it's uh, certified 8.5. Uh, this next one is uh, interesting. It's the British edition of Spider-Man number one, and it's the highest graded copy of the British edition. And a, a reminder, these UK editions were not reprints, they were printed at the same time as the US versions. Here's Alex Raymond, Flash Gordon Sunday from 1935, and this is a full page example now. What do I mean by that? Well, usually Flash Gordon appeared f filling much of the page, but with a Jungle Jim strip on top of it. There was a four month period when Flash Gordon and Jungle Jim each were on a full page. We actually have an example of both in this sale. Here's the Flash Gordon, and of course 1935 was a peak period for Alex Raymond. Here's a, a page from Action Comics number 43 from the Joe Schuster studio. To give you an idea, this is from 1941. The earliest Superman art from Action we've ever offered before is from 13 years later. Uh, quite remarkable and it's got a great shot of Superman. Jack Kirby Fantastic Four inked by the great Joe Sennett here. This is from issue 63. The Human Torch and the Thing are taking on Blastar. Dan Atkins, uh, Strange Tales number 164, featuring Doctor Strange. Now this is a twice up size cover from 1968. And look at this one from 15 years later. Michael Golden's cover for the Doctor Strange portfolio. I should mention about the Golden piece, it is quite large. Uh, in fact, the art is 28 inches high. It ha really has a lot of impact when you see it in person. Now here's Sal Buscema, the cover to Avengers number 91. Now this is from the Kree Skrull War storyline. Surely you've read that whole story, right? If not, you need to pick up the trade paperback and uh, check it out and then uh, check back with me later. Uh, just remember, the three cows are the key to it all. Always remember that. Now how about Bernie Wrightson, the cover to Swamp Thing number one. This is the best of the rights and pieces that we have in the sale, but we have many great ones. Uh, more rights and pieces than you can shake a severed head at, and uh, you'll want to check out the whole section we have devoted to that artist. Another great who needs no introduction, Frank Frazetta. This is his cover painting for At the Earth's Core. Absolutely stunning, and it's larger than most Frazetta paintings we've seen. It is 21 inches wide by 29 inches high. Paul Smith, uh, you might have discovered the X-Men when he was the artist on it. I know I did way back when. He only did 10 covers for the X-Men. This is his first. Who can forget this scene of Storm turning into one of the aliens known as the Brood, or uh, as Wolverine liked to call them, the Sleezoids. And here's uh, Bill Watterson, Cavan and Hobbs Daily from 1987. If you collect strip art, you know that very few uh, originals of Calvin and Hobbes are out there, and this is an example with a pretty funny gag as well. I should mention uh, the Golden Age covers you see behind me were all selected as uh, on the list of the 40 best covers of the Golden Age by a poll that was uh, co-sponsored by Heritage and CGC. And of course, all of them are in the auction. Check all of those out and a thousand more lots at HA.com.